welcome! Hope you're having a good day. So, I've got a bit of a weird one. I've had many, many suggestions for all different types of very, very strange weird wines. Sort of a weird brew. So I thought I would take your suggestions and then think about it and make it my own. So what I've come up with is an onion wine. Pretty fun. So onion wine isn't unheard of. There are recipes out there for it. So I'm going to do my own version because, well, I can and it's me and that's what I do. So I have got myself a kilo of white onions. Just cheapy, cheapy white onions. I actually think a kilo was it for 69p. I also have a kilo of sugar that I'm going to be using and uh, some cheeky sotanas. So let's do this. So onions are actually pretty sweet. They've actually got quite a high sugar content, which is why they taste really good if you bake these in the oven, uh, just with the skins on. But uh, I'm going to be caramelizing my onions and making a caramelized onion wine, because I think that would probably is going to be the best way to make a tasty wine from onions. So basically I have to go through and cut up my onions. So obviously you uh, take your onion, cut the stalky bit off, put that down like so, and then you can peel them as you see fit and then just dice them up. So cut some fingers and then just go through and do that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but small bits means it cooks quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do all of these onions. So our kilo of onions have been diced and I've cleaned them away and got rid of the rubbish and uh, got my pan set up. Now it doesn't have to be a heavy bottom pan, it just happens to be that's the one that works the best, but anyone will do. Thin bottom ones, you've got to stir them a lot more, otherwise you'll get burnt areas. So now we are going to sweat and caramelize our onions to extract, to get rid of that harsh onion flavor and hopefully get a nice sort of sweet onion aroma. Should be pretty good. So uh, in they go. Oh, this, this may be a case of doing it in two batches. Half here. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of onion. So, because we're going to be sweating these and caramelizing them, we want this to be on a sort of low heat. Uh, obviously, if you have an electric hob, it's somewhere down in the two or three, probably. I, I don't know. I use gas, so uh, I just know that a low heat. I just give them a stir. If they start to stick, I've got some water, just ordinary tap water, that I'm going to add in. But for now, let's just stir these on a low heat. So it's taken the best part of 45 minutes to get our onions to start sort of browning off and just adding a little bit of water a bit at a time. And yeah, it does work. It just takes a long time to start caramelizing onions without butter because, well, butter and sugar are excellent. But uh, I don't want to make caramelized sugar. I wanted to caramelize the uh, sugars in the onion slightly. And it's got a lot, well, it doesn't really smell of onions, it just smells kind of sweet. Mm. They do taste rather nice, kind of sweet. That little bit of burning, well, caramelizing, makes them taste really nice and sweet. So, um, now comes the fun bit. So I've got my 500 grams of sultanas, and I'm gonna be adding in 250 grams of sultanas. Oh yes. There we go, approximately. This will give it a bit more body and I'm not gonna be removing them from the pan. In fact, I'm gonna be adding in a cheeky liter and a, yeah, just under a liter and a half of cold water. 
or as much as I can fit in my pan. Now I'm going to simmer this for 20 minutes. That's going to extract all of the flavors from the uh, already lovely onions and the sultanas. So it's been boiling now for 20 minutes and it smells really good, oddly. I'm getting sweet onion, uh, which is coming from probably some of the caramelized sugars in the onion and also from the sultanas that we added in. So now, just get to turn it off and we're gonna leave it for about one hour uh, just to give it some extra time to infuse and cool down a bit. So in the meantime, get to chill, watch some YouTube and sterilize my damage on or rinse it out uh, and then we'll be back. So our hour is up and uh, yeah, it's relatively cool. It's still warm, but at the same time, nowhere near hot enough to melt plastic. So I've gone ahead and I've sterilized everything and rinsed it off and I used my bleach and washing up liquid solution uh, included sterilizing the worktop so I can put all my stuff down. So I haven't used my five liter water containers in a while, so that's what we're gonna do. And I've got my cheeky kilo of sugar. And for a change, I'm just gonna dump it straight in. There we go. Like the sands of time. There we go. So, what I'm gonna be doing is I've got my sieve and I've got just a container that doesn't have to be sterilized because we're just putting the onion glup in there. And uh, let's pour in the lovely jus. It smells really good, oddly. It smells a lot like sweet onion soup. That's just... We're finished straining through my lovely onion jus. Mmm. Actually tastes really good. Look at them. Onions and sultanas. Anyway, so we now have our sugar and our kind of liquid that's nice and still warm. Let's give it a shake to dissolve in the sugar. So now I've got this mostly shaken up, I'm gonna to have to add some more water in there. Can't just brew that on its own. So I'm gonna use my kettle because I've made myself a coffee. So I know it's sterilized and I'm gonna use cold water from the kettle to top this up. And there we go, up to where we want. Now it is looking rather interesting and as I've added water to it, it's got a, it's not an onion swell, uh, onion swell, it's not an onion smell, but it is kind of sweet and reminiscent of onion. It's very unusual. Hmm, novel. So before I shake it up and to mix it all in, I'm going to grab my hydrometer. I'm now going to add in my cheeky ingredients. So one teaspoon of yeast nutrient, because I want this to, well, ferment to hopefully dryness. So in goes a cheeky teaspoon. And because we used onions, um, there are sugars in onions, but they're mainly carbohydrates. I'm gonna add in a little bit of amylase, just wine making amylase, nothing fantastic, just a little teaspoon. And I haven't stored this next to my oven, so it will definitely work. So I'm gonna give this a shake and then I'm gonna go grab my hydrometer. So I've got my now rinsed hydrometer and my lovely shaken onion wine. It still smells strange. Can't put my finger on what it smells like. And in goes our hydrometer. So just give that a minute to do its thing. But uh, this should be a rather interesting little uh, recipe, I suppose. If you ever wondered what it's like to ferment onions, this is probably gonna be a fairly accurate representation of what it's gonna taste like. So that looks like it's settled out. And it is reading 225 grams and roughly 13% if it ferments to dryness, which is roughly 1.080. That's pretty, well, 13% is pretty nice. There are some sugars in the onions as well as some sugars in the sultanas. That's why it's over the usual 11%. So the yeast that is gonna be tasked with fermenting onions it's just my universal wine yeast. 
So let's just chuck a little sprinkle in, like so. Put my lid on, little quarter turn, and we're all set. So this should be a rather interesting and novel idea. I don't know. So maybe it would be good, maybe it would be terrible. There's only one way to find out, and that's to give it a go. Cool. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones, and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later. So I just want to take a second to thank my patrons. Uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon-only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below, and of course the Patreon and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. Yeah.